Hi, I'm Karen. Welcome to my channel, Life is a Classroom. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing 10 tips with you if you've just signed your VIP Kid contract. First of all, congratulations and welcome to the company. So tip number one is to download the app to your phone and to your teaching device. VIP Kid has an app specifically for phones, for iPads that can be used for teaching, as well as for your desktop or laptop to teach off of. You can't teach off of your phone app. Um, you also can't teach off of Chromebooks, but you can teach off of um, an iPad or your desktop or your laptop. So you're going to want to download those apps and get to know them and explore them. There's differences between the apps and there's certain things you can do across all three. So you're gonna to wanna to explore those. There's also a workshop that talks about teaching in the VIP Kid app, and I'll talk about workshops again in a few moments. Tip number two is to check your computer update settings. Go into the settings of your computer, and you wanna make sure that your computer will ask your permission before it does any updates. The worst thing that could happen is for you to turn on your computer at 5 a.m. to begin teaching and discover that your computer is starting updates without your permission. And if you do not enter into your classroom, then you will get a teacher no-show. They won't issue a teacher IT problem because you couldn't get in. You have to be in the classroom and have a technology problem to get a teacher IT. So to prevent that, make sure that you go into your computer settings and either set it to update at a time where you're not going to be teaching so whether that be 2 p.m or that it just asks your permission tip number three is to open slots open them right away open consistent availability so yes it's a little bit scary to open slots but there is something called the power slots booking incentive that you want to take advantage of and this incentive is an incentive actually for VIP kid parents to book teachers who have had less than 20 classes booked so you want to open your slots right away to take advantage of that so that you can be seen by as many parents as possible early on Yes, it's scary, but the only way that you're going to get over that fear of teaching is to actually teach a class. I recommend that you evaluate what you want your teaching schedule to be. If you want to teach from 5 to 7 a.m. Monday to Friday, open those slots and to begin, just see if you get bookings for, for that. If after some time you're not receiving any bookings, uh, then you might look at expanding your hours to sometimes you wouldn't normally teach to see if you can, can pick up some students who like you enough to book you during the hours you want to teach. But I recommend just opening slots consistently and it's up to you whether you open up back-to-back -back slots so where you'd be teaching from 6 to 6.30 and 6.30 to 7.00. I'm more of a dive right in <laughs> kind of approach. So the first time that I opened up slots, I wasn't sure how many bookings I was going to get. And the first time I checked it, a few hours after the frenzy, I was very surprised to find that I had been booked for all the slots I had open, which was eight back-to-back -back classes five days a week. <laughs> that was my first week with VIP Kit. So I just sort of got thrown in the deep end and it's not that bad. <laughs> There's tips and tricks. I probably wouldn't recommend doing eight classes back to back to begin with, but don't be afraid to open a straight hour of classes and you can do two back to back classes. It'll be okay. <laughs> Tip number four is to plan back up. So before you start teaching, you want to think through what is your plan going to be if you wake up one morning or you're in the middle of teaching and suddenly your power goes out or you have problems with your Wi-Fi? So the three things that you want to consider backup options for would be your lights, your power, and particularly your power source for 
your laptop or computer, and then third is your internet connection. So for example, I have an iPad that I use as my backup teaching device. So if there's a problem with my laptop, if um, the other day, for example, in class, I was teaching and my laptop just suddenly, I don't even know how to describe it, but started doing this weird screen went blue and it told me it was doing updates or something like that. Although not updates because I have it set that it won't do that without asking me. Um, but there was a problem with it. And so I quickly grabbed my iPad, which I keep to the side, and I was back in class within a few moments. Another option for power backup is called an uninterrupted power supply or a UPS. Personally, I don't have one of those, but I know many teachers who do and it's basically a mini generator of sorts, as that's the best way I can explain it, that you would have your internet modem <laughs> plugged into, as well as your computer, particularly useful if you're teaching from a desktop as opposed to a laptop, so that if the power were interrupted, this device takes over immediately and can provide power for a few hours of time. Um, light so whether you would use if the power went out and you were able to use your laptop still to teach and You had another internet connection we'll, which we'll talk about in a moment Then you also need to consider what your light supply would be so whether that's flashlights or you can buy battery operated light bulbs that are light bulbs that also have a battery option that might be something to look into but you're going to want to have some type of light backup plan. And the final one is your internet, which is obviously very important. And most teachers use their hotspot on their phone as a backup. You need to make sure that you know how to use this, that it is set up, and that you can switch to start using that in an instant if need be. So that if you're trying to get into a class, and you've woken up to find that your internet's down or the connection isn't great, that you can switch over to your hotspot without any problems. There are also internet devices that can be purchased and that you can use, but most teachers find that a hotspot on their phone is the most practical. There may also be the option for you to consider a backup location for teaching. So for instance, if you wake up one morning and the power is out at your house, is there a hotel nearby that you might be able to go and use one of their meeting rooms early in the morning and set up there to teach where you would have internet and lights and power? Or is there a friend's house nearby that you could go to maybe 10 minutes away that is on a different power grid? Is there a restaurant that you could go to. For instance, some teachers I've heard of will go to McDonald's and teach in the play place at 4 a.m. because it's not busy but it's open and they could use the power and the Wi-Fi there and it's obviously well lit. So just thinking through what's your backup plan going to be if there were any of these technical problems for you. My number five tip is to develop a routine and show up. So if you want to be teaching from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. each morning, my recommendation is that even if you don't have a classes booked your first week, get up, get in the routine of waking up at that time and being in front of your computer at 5 a.m. Maybe it's that you're looking through resources in the VIP Kid library or you're watching YouTube videos like this one that can be helpful for you as you're setting up. Maybe you're building a routine around your home that's going to help you to be more successful once you do get classes, whether it's building a routine of doing some meal prep and having some meals in the freezer, or getting another area of your home that's feeling chaotic under control so that when you get classes booked, you can focus on your teaching. Um, but I recommend develop a routine, show up, even if you don't have a class booked that you can still be working towards working on your career and your business. This also will help you to avoid teacher no-shows because if you're waking up at the same time 
and you've gotten yourself into a routine, that's going to help. My sixth tip is to check out the new teacher center as well as the support center. So as a new teacher, for the first 60 days, you have access to the new teacher center. And this is a really great resource that has many different tips for you. And I highly recommend that you check them out, that you read through articles, that you complete the challenges that are there to get tokens, which you can redeem later for different prizes and things like that. And uh, once you are past the 60 days and you don't have access to the new teacher center, then you will still have access to the support center. If you go to your teacher portal, up at the top you'll see support and if you click there you'll be taken to the support center where there are many articles that you can look through when you're waking up maybe without classes booked and you're working on your business. Read through some of those articles. They talk about common problems and company policies and different information that is really helpful for you to know to prevent any problems from happening. The seventh tip I have is if you if you apply to the IP kit and you already had a TESOL certificate, I would recommend that now you go ahead and add the VIP kid TESOL certificates. That way you'll still have those badges showing up on your teacher profile. I say to my referrals that VIP kid offers this free TESOL so it's not mandatory to complete another TESOL before applying. However, it's my suggestion that you do because Although the exact formula VIP Kid uses to calculate your base pay isn't known, they do tell us that certificates are one of the factors that they look at. So I think that coming in and saying I have a TESOL certificate may contribute to a higher base pay. I don't have any proof to back that up, but from what I've seen from other people applying and from their information that certificates are included in calculating that, it seems to suggest that it could make a difference. I also think that it helps you to evaluate whether this is something that you'd like doing and it's a really good foundation. I think it helps you to do better on your mock classes and pass those. So I highly recommend doing a TESOL certificate ahead of time. I do have an affiliate link which I will put in the description of this video where you can take a TESOL certificate for $20 and it's a it's called a 120 hour certificate. Don't let that scare you. It can be done in probably 10 hours. My most recent referral did it in a little bit less than that even. So it definitely does not take 120 hours. But if you've done the TESOL through the link that I've given you or through somebody else or you already had one, I still recommend add the VIP kid ones, just it can't hurt to have that on your profile for parents to see. Number eight is to look at workshops and attend workshops. There will be information about this in your new teacher center, but if you go to your teacher portal, visit the resources tab and then library, you will be taken to the VIP Kid Library, which has lots of great information. Next, you will see a article, an article that says the workshop token festival for the current month. And you can see in there about different tokens that are offered for attending different workshops. To the left of that, on the library page, you'll see a picture of Dino who's dancing and says, ready for workshops. If you click on that, you will be taken to the current workshop calendar and on there you can view all of the workshops that VIP Kid offers. I think this is one of the really great things about this company is the amount of free professional development that they offer. And even after more than three years with the company, I still love attending workshops. I learn things from them every time and it's a great opportunity for me to uh, see what questions new teachers have, how things are changing with the company, and so if you are a new teacher or a veteran teacher, go check out the workshop page. There is a category specific to new teachers that you can select. I highly recommend that you start with the 
uh, new teacher kickoff workshops. There are two of those, I believe, two different categories. So start with the new teacher kickoff workshops and then go on from there. Another one that I'd really recommend that isn't in the new teacher category of workshops, but that I really think you should attend is the Chinese cultural awareness workshop and also the Chinese language awareness workshop. Those are two that I would also recommend you put at the top of your priority list for workshops. A note that when you attend workshops, at the end of the workshop, you'll be given a link to fill out a survey. You must fill out that survey to get the tokens from VIP Kid for attending. So make sure that you fill that out. Tip number nine, don't spend your paycheck before it arrives. It can be really easy to buy things for this job and to think, oh, I need this, or that would be so fun to have. I'd really recommend that you don't go out and buy everything. <laughs> Just start with the basics and your first priority needs to be the quality of your teaching and not about how many props you have or how many reward systems you have to offer. Focus on the quality of your teaching. That needs to be your foundation. And after that, I think that then you can branch off of that to get the fun things for your classroom. And I will make a video about some of the best investments I've made as a VIP kid teacher. If that's one you want me to make sooner rather than later, then just leave a comment below and let me know so that I can prioritize making that one which that number nine brings us to number 10, which is you need to go and input your banking information to get paid from VIP Kid. So you'll want to go to your teacher portal and you'll want to go to the My Info and then on the left side, you'll see the button to click for your payment information and you will want to put your banking information in there. You can also choose for VIP Kid to hold a paycheck if you've earned less than $80 and they'll combine it and just pay it out with the next payment if once it totals over 80. So if you're in Canada, for instance, and with a bank that charges wire fees, then this is something I highly recommend, but otherwise it's not really a big deal. You'll also want to choose how often you want to be paid from VIP Kid. Do you want to be paid monthly, weekly, or I believe it's bi-weekly. <laughs> um, but there's three payment options. Personally, I go with the monthly option that used to be all that they had, and that's what works well for me with my system of budgeting and what I like to do. The weekly payments, I've seen some issues teachers have had where VIP Kid issues the payment on the same day every week, but it doesn't necessarily come through on the same day every week by the time it makes through makes its way through all the intermediary banks from China to you. So I've seen some teachers get frustrated because they don't get paid on a consistent day of the week with the weekly system. The monthly one just works well for me. So you'll, so you'll want to choose what is best for you. All right, now I know I said 10 tips, but there's actually two more that I just have to add on here. My 11th tip, first bonus one, is learn how to screenshot. Look up on Google how to screenshot on whatever your computer is. And there's usually a keyboard shortcut that will help you out here. Anytime that you are in a classroom and there's anything that's less than normal, you'd probably want to take a screenshot. For instance, if I am in a class and a student hasn't shown up, then I'll just take a quick screenshot most of the time. And that way if I'm in class and there's any tech problems or I can't see the student, it looks like the student isn't present, anything of the sort, it doesn't hurt to take a screenshot just to have as backup or as proof if you need it. The company is great and I've never really had a problem with needing to prove anything, but there are times when it can be helpful to have screenshots, not necessarily even only as a defense for yourself, but just to support something that you're saying or what have you. Um, 
it doesn't hurt to take a screenshot as long as you delete them later because if you're like me you'll end up with your computer full of hundreds of screenshots which need to be deleted and gone through so um learn how to screenshot and then my final tip my second bonus tip here is to add certifications so go back to the resources tab where earlier you went to see the library to get workshops now you're going to go resources certifications and under here you will see the different certifications that vip kit offers there are categories listed across the top and if each if any of those categories has something you can certify in that you're eligible for right now you'll see an orange red dot beside it you can click on any of those categories and see the different certifications. So for instance, if you went into the major course tab and as a new teacher, let's say you click on level seven, that's one that as a new teacher, you're not gonna be eligible for. So it's not gonna be lit up, it'll say unavailable. However, if you click on it and scroll down, it will show you the prerequisites that are required to get that certification so you can be monitoring how close you are to getting it. Also, you will see which certifications you are eligible for. It will light up and be green and say available. So you can click on that and view the materials and do what you need to pass to get that certificate. It may be that you need to record a video for them of pretending to teach that type of class, or you just may need to pay to pass a quiz and then have that certification added to your profile. The more certifications you have, then obviously the more classes that you can teach. So there are uh, many pros to getting as many certifications as you can. All right, those are my top 10 tips plus two extras for you if you've just signed your VIP Kid contract. If you haven't signed your VIP Kid contract yet and you're thinking about applying to the company, if you have any questions, please send me an email at karen.lifeisaclassroom at gmail.com. I would love to help you out through the application process. And if you are a teacher already, I would love to hear what you found most helpful as soon as you signed your contract. So leave a comment below and I would love for you to hit subscribe and the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Up next, I'm going to have a video of 10 tips for when you've been booked for your first class. So what do you do, need to do and know right before you teach that first class? Thanks for watching.